Texas, one in state, under God, one and indivisible. <laughs> Item one is a public hearing. This is to on the voluntary annexation request from BNSF Railroad on uh, 265.898 acres. Is anyone here for the public hearing on BNSF? Anyone? No, I don't have any comments on Zoom or Facebook. The ones here will close the public hearing. That's item two. Item three is a presentation of employee service award for June 2021. Mayor and Council, this is the uh, presentation of the service awards for June. We have Charles Ortega, the police department that has served five years. We also have Tiffany Raleigh, five years with the CBB and Civic Center, and Haven Carroll, 15 years with public with Park. Um, I'm not sure if Charles is here. Charles, if you'll, if you'll come up and uh, receive your pen. Service awards out to our employees. Item four on the agenda is public comments. Um, Chaplain Lance Blackwell, you want to? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Mayor. I'm Chaplain Lance Blackwell, and I'm one of the original members of the Cleveland Unity Committee, which plans different events here. And uh, this lady right over here, who just arrived, Denise is one of our original uh, people that we came together to found this committee. And so we just, I'm coming to say thank you to the city of Cleveland for a couple of events that are happening now. And one of the major events is, of course, the celestial display on item number 29. Ruth, thank y'all for pulling everything together. We've got all the funds pulled together through donations, and we're going to have that. So I'm just coming to say thank you to uh, our Cleveland Independent School District and Superintendent Chris Trotter, a wonderful man, and we pulled all, everything together uh, with all of our first responders to make things go well for this 4th of July. And uh, it's just a wonderful time to celebrate and uh, America and to celebrate it on a Sunday evening where we can come together as families. So I just want to say thank you. I also have another thank you that I wanted to say that uh, every Tuesday, uh, as a chaplain, we meet at the Cleveland Prayer Center to pray. And I'm here just to let you know that God has answered our prayers. And the Cleveland Airport is about to expand. And uh, he is bringing all the funds in, but no cost to the city of Cleveland or to none of the uh, citizens here. It's just going to be coming in. And we're going to be building more of, of what we need for all of our airplanes and coming in with everything so i just wanted to thank you and i know uh chris you know for years and years he'll be uh, managing that program and bringing everything together and pulling things together to to make these new hangars for the airports and that's just going to keep growing here so just wanted to thank you for 
for that. He's a mighty man of God, and we're doing a great job. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate everything you do. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Weldon, Vance Weldon. Good evening. My name is Van Weldon. I um, haven't done this very much, but get a little practice. Um, I farm for a living. Started my tire, but um, I grew produce. And, um, I was told that, um, anyway, I'm here to let everyone know who's not aware that there's a landfill going on next to my farm. Uh, we grow about 30 acres of produce and farm well. We all have about 165 acres total. And I've uh, been here, in the, this is in San Jacinto County, so not really within this jurisdiction, I guess. But um, anyway, uh, I guess my question to you is the same one I presented to uh, some folks down at City Hall in Houston. And how many, how many landfills are you guys gonna have in your, the East Fork of the San Jacinto River before you kind of get tired of them. We already have two, I guess one security, one cut and shoot, and now another one. And so I know I'm limited on time, but um, the things I think the, the city of Cleveland should be aware of is that it's my understanding that it's something like with the Burlington Northern Railroad, you might want to be expanding westward towards Peach Creek and whatever. Um, this landfill is going to be built right next to the Jay Harper uh, Creek. It's going to be a, in a floodplain or next to a floodplain. Their access road is going to be going through a floodplain. If the road is not constructed properly, then they have the permission by the TCEQ, just like they did during Hurricane Harvey, to discharge leachate, which is hazardous waste, into Jay Harper Creek, which goes down. And then the other topic is um, these guys have about 2,000 acres. They're from Mississippi. They're planning on selling it. They got on the market right now for $20 million and um, they are well connected. And um, anyway, my point is, is that in the Northeast, they don't have hazardous waste sites anymore. They put them on rail cars and they ship them south. And with Burlington Northern Railroad only what, three or four miles from this new site, I talked to the judge over in Colorado County, which is Columbus, Texas. And he told me they just they had a, a landfill on their property in their county, and they tried to bring in a hazardous waste location. It cost 1.6 million in legal fees. Um, they won. So my point is, is if if the community doesn't stand up, this area may be known as a landfill corridor, you know, rather than um, a, a great place to live. So thank you very much for your time. Well, Mr. Weldon, it, it's not a done deal, is it? I talked to the can our county judge. No, it's not a done deal. I mean, we, we're making good progress, but uh, it's a very political situation. Uh, they've got a couple of lobbyists working for them. They're some guys from Mississippi. They're the granddad started in the Republican Party in Mississippi. They've got tons of money, you know, and on my GoFundMe, we have $5,000 and they already pay their lobbyists like 180,000 just by itself. So we um, we were able to get with Robert Nichols and uh, Ernest Bales. Uh, um, not well, I talked to Ernest too about it, uh, about a, point, a couple of weeks ago, and he didn't say the thing it was. Well, we, we, we have a public meeting promise. We are trying to get more awareness. So in our area, there's a lot of apathy. There's a little bit of a, uh, I mean, it takes a, forget about the work. It's just a matter of getting, handing out flyers at flea markets on them, let people know what's going on. Because what's going to happen is, the biggest problem is the traffic. It, you know, granted, we may be contaminated water. We may stink the high hell. We may have, you know, seagulls everywhere. Because that's what happens in security. But the traffic, they're talking about 500 garbage trucks a day. And that's just, I mean, and that's not your your area. But, I and I'm not, I hope it doesn't happen. But um, anyway, thank you for your time. And, I can't speak for the council, but I think we'd like to probably have a resolution or something, maybe uh, yeah. against it. That'd be great. I don't, I don't speak for them. We're not on it tonight. So right. Not, well, and, and one thing, you know, I told to, 
I got the fortune or misfortune of being on the front cover of the Houston Chronicle here. I saw it. I read it all. And, uh, I read it the whole story thing. is like David versus Goliath, you know. Yeah. And um, uh, so I got an audience with, I guess it was Mayor Pro Tem, Dave Martin, Andy Yicken, and uh, Stephen Costello. And they said they're going to look into participating in the contested hearing, worry about the, the potential for water contamination downstream because. I hired a geophysicist, and I apologize, I don't bring enough maps, but I hired a PhD out of Texas A&M, right. and he, um, he's not trying to say there's a silver bullet that this thing's going to pollute the world, but uh, it is a fact that if there's a storm and they can't get in, if the pump trucks to get the leachate out, they, 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 they put it into Jay Harbor Creek, it's in their permit. So, thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you, Vince. Appreciate it. Mr. Carson, your own Jim Carson with the Chamber of Commerce. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council Members. Uh, in case you guys missed it, uh, not last week, but the week before, we had our outdoor expo. And preliminary count, it's not final yet, but it's, uh, we know it was at least 2,000 people came. And they came as far as uh, Lufkin, we know, because we asked a lot of people where they were coming from. Uh, Livingston, down toward Galveston, everything else. So we brought a lot of people into Cleveland. It was a great event. Uh, people enjoyed it. And, you know, I, I kept telling everybody, and they finally believe me now, we were going to have Chamber of Commerce weather, and we did. So June 24th, uh, next week, is our Thirsty Thursday at uh, La Costa. It complimentary our d'oeuvres, and then you pay for your uh, beverages, whether it be water or anything else. So. That's just a networking thing we started about three, four months ago. July 1 is our chamber luncheon, and it's going to be a cornerstone again this, uh, this, this luncheon will be. Jennifer Bergman, the Liberty County District Attorney, will be speaker, and Pueblo Viejo will be catering. Chamber offices will be closed uh, July 5th in honor uh, recognition of Independence Day. And uh, July 8th is our Chamber Connections, and this is the month we move. We go for six months to a local restaurant, and this month we're moving to El Burrito. That's from 11.30 to 1, and that's a great networking group. We've been getting between uh, 22 to 40 people coming to that, and they're just people who want to network their businesses in town. And we're still looking for some sponsors uh, for the uh, Leadership East Texas. Uh, we have a meeting tomorrow, and that's going to kick off uh, starting September. It's a seven-month program. It'll be September, October, November, January, February, March, with graduation in April. It's one day a month. And uh, so we're looking for commitments from uh, local businesses. I think we're going to have at least 20, maybe 25 uh, enrollees in the first class. And we thank you for the uh, support we get from the city. Thank you, Jim. Appreciate you. <clears throat> Item five is reports or comments from the city council mayor or city staff. Danny. Well, I'd just like to thank everybody for, uh, for coming tonight and I'm just looking forward to this new year. We really accomplished a lot in 2020. I'm really looking forward to 2021. I see a lot of positives here in the city and I'm just blessed that I have a good seat. And I can watch the growth and anticipate the growth, and uh, I'm pretty sure the council will give it our best shot to make sure to continue to make things happen for free. Thank you. Roy. I just want to thank everybody for this, uh, for just coming together and putting us in these chairs. It's been awesome, blessing to be back again. I thank the community and the city for the. The, the vision and the dreams that they have to make this city grow and be awesome. And how our children's uh, school education is going to be uh, more awesome when they can go to college and come back here and, and help us make the city grow. And just thank everybody for everything that they've been doing in the city of Cleveland. And everybody be blessed. Thank you, Morrison. Karen. I just want to thank you also for being here tonight. 
we appreciate that and just and look around and see all the things that are going on and the improvements that are being made everywhere. And I'm really happy about that and happy for all the help that we're getting doing that. Thank you all. Thank you. Marilyn? Um, again, um, and then one else just once again, wanted to be in here. And uh, also, if anyone signed up for the uh, food giveaway that was originally uh, scheduled for May 22nd, it has been rescheduled for July 17th. And there is a new link, so you go back and we signed up for volunteering. If you don't have that link, just see if anybody can get in this forward to you. Thank you. Thank you, Marilyn. Uh, we want to thank everybody as well for coming tonight and um, appreciate what you're doing for our city and helping with everything. And if there's anything that we can do for you personally, please feel free to contact any one of us up here. We'd be glad to help you as much as we can. Thank you, Jamie. Yep. I want to just, you know, re reiterate that the grocery giveaway is July the 17th. We have the 4th of July celebration on the 4th of July. It's a Sunday uh, from dusk to dawn. Hope everybody can come to it. I appreciate everybody. Bobby? I don't know if it's not Ms. Angel? Yes, sir. Item 6 is consider appointment of Mayor Pro Tem for shoulder requirements. Mayor, I'd like to um, <clears throat> make a motion that we nominate James Franklin as our mayor pro tem. Uh, second for me, Mayor. James, second. You did. It's failed from the lack of. Vote. I'd like to for y'all to consider uh, Danny Lee. Did we get the second time? You can tell him again. Yeah. Yeah. I was just going to ask him. Oh, I Mm -hmm. Okay. Then let's vote on it. All those in favor of James Franklin as a mayor pro tem. Service consider a resolution designating persons authorized to sign the city related bank accounts as mayor pro tem, which that would be James. Yes. Uh, mayor Council, with pro tem change, uh, I, the, uh, in the past we had the city manager, city secretary, and mayor, and pro tem as a trust signer. So we'll, we'll uh, get the cards back to bank to sign cards out. Uh, and uh, have everybody reach out with the mayor pro tem. Thank you. Thank you. Can we need a motion? Even though we voted on that, I, I didn't hear the comments. Any more discussion or anything to that effect? And my only uh, comment on that is that um, I would suggest that we keep Mr. Lee as the mayor pro tem without changing any of the bank information and he's been there for a while and and I think he's filled in pretty well. So but 
that is my discussion. <laughs> is that, the discussion is to leave uh, Danny Lee on the check sign? That is check sign? Well, well no, I, I just want to confirm that he's being in the middle of the camp. Uh, the majority will yeah. agree with that. Can we um, hold on to this until after we finish our executive session and then discuss it? Sure. Not really. We've already voted. Well, it's not because this wouldn't be an appropriate discussion. Oh, okay. You've already voted, but I did have the right to, yes. to state my yes. opinion. We need a motion, though, to designate James as the sign of these accounts. Approve the resolution. I make a motion that we approve the resolution. James second. Okay, motion from Carolyn, second from James. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Show your right hand. The Lord. Okay, the names. Was anybody voted against it? Item A is consideration of possible action on <clears throat> voluntary annexation ordinance for BNS uh, F Railroad extending the corporate sea limits, sea limits of the city of Cleveland, Texas to embrace and include all of territory within certain limits and boundaries and annexing to the city of Cleveland, Texas, all the territory within such boundaries, approving a service plan for all the area within such territory, making findings and containing other provisions related to the subject. Mayor Council, this, this goes along with the uh, open public hearing that we had uh, at the beginning of the meeting. Uh, item A is uh, BNSF submitted an annexation agreement to include the remaining portion of their uh, project uh, within the city limits. That's a northern addition uh, territory lies within the exclusive extraterritorial jurisdiction of the city. And that territory is uh, owned 100% by BNSF. Uh, the agreement uh, has been a re reviewed and approved by the city of Clinton, right? And the agreement uh, does not include pre prerequisite section, which uh, if it fails to occur, the city will disannex the property. City staff and BNSF has drafted a public plug, is that correct? Uh, under the direction of the Zoning Commission, and we're still working on a water and sewer uh, portion of the uh, agreement, uh, still to be conferred at this time. The required public hearing also was held at the beginning of the meeting, and Lacey, Lacey Kreger, representing BNSF, is in attendance and can answer any questions regarding uh, the request. <coughs> Staff is recommending the approval of the ordinance as presented. We're ready. You know, get, get going. Now. We're ready. Uh, yeah. Thank you for coming. Just make a motion, um, Mayor, that we go ahead and um, annex the, the ordinance for the BNSF extending the corporate limits to the city of uh, Cleveland, Texas, to embrace and include all the territory within certain limits and boundaries annexing to the city of Cleveland, Texas. Second. I have a motion from Maryland, second term from Carolyn. Any other discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Against? Okay. You're in the city. <laughs> 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 I 
Item nine is consideration of possible action on approval of an agreement between Jack Stevens and City of Cleveland on relocation of hangars with cost reimbursement for the hangars to be located at the Cleveland Municipal Airport and authorize city manager to sign the agreement. We all want to talk about that just a little bit. Uh, either one. Which guy or the, which kind of tell you what Mr. Stevens will be done. Hi. Yeah, if I can do a, just a quick synopsis of, okay. of the project. At the city's desire is to enter the agreement uh, to further develop the municipal airport. You remember in 2019, we built 32 hangars. This would add another 10 uh, to, to the existing or uh, Can you tell me how many hangars we have total? Around we have, we have uh, 40. No, we added 40. We got about 60. So, so that's 40 in the last uh, six years. So it's my understanding that Mr. Stevens owns a hangar uh, as identified in the agreement, currently located in North Houston Airport. That's in Porter, Texas. Mm -hmm. North Houston Airport is scheduled to close. And Mr. Stevens uh, would like to relocate the hangar complex. <coughs> a meeting with the airport advisory board occurred on May 25th. The airport board is in favor of going forward uh, with his request subject to the airport rules and all the conditions set forth in the agreement. And obviously this is a beneficial project for the city to participate because it provides additional hangar spaces for demand uh, that is currently on the wait list. 38? 38? Okay. 38 are currently on the wait list. This new hangar complex will facilitate 10 more uh, tenants. Mr. Stevens has agreed to relocate the hangar complex to the airport at the proposed cost of 256,000 described in the bid proposal and further agrees to front the cost for such relocation in exchange for the city to agree to reimburse to the collection of rent from the hangar complex. So Mr. Stevens plans to, to uh, lease the space and we will pay that back over certain terms. Uh, and we know that the T hangers will go for about 350 a month. That's a rate of return, return on investment of just over six years, right at six years. Um, there may be some additions. We've got a hanger. I mean, I'm sorry, apron that needs to be constructed. So for to include that, we're looking at a re, re, uh, rate of return of about seven years, a little over seven years. That photo is uh, in your packet of the existing hangar. It's a really nice uh, hangar. It, it, it looks like uh, similar to the ones that we built in 2019. And the proposed location is just south of the three hangars that we built in 2019. Uh, and it would share a portion of that existing apron to the north. Uh, we'd have to construct something to the south. Uh, and Mr. Stevens needs to move uh, pretty quickly and with the Porter Airport closing down. Staff is re uh, recommending approval of the agreement as presented and <coughs> authorize the city manager to sign this. Mr. Stevens, do you have anything to say? Did Yes, if you yeah, like. I, I can share just what, what kind of is going on there. Exactly what you are. <clears throat> we don't we don't have the apron that you spoke of in included in that. And there's several other things that aren't, but the whole package is is in that same territorial number. To do that, to do the the hangers that are there, it's somewhere around five hundred thousand dollars. So by taking down those ones that are there and bringing those here, you're going to obtain an extremely extremely nice deal. 10, 10 hangers are there now. Five of them never had an airplane in them. They never finished the apron on the other side. So they just, they got Bob, y'all are good with this. Bob's the. Yeah, this is a very good deal for the city. Okay. Mayor of North Cleveland, excuse me. Sir. Mayor of North Cleveland. Yeah. Thank you, Mayor. I appreciate it. Anything else? <laughs> well, Mr. Stevens, I, I'm so glad. I'm, I'm, I'm actually Chris, you know. Oh, okay. His, I've known Jack for 50 years. And, and we do construction for his, so 
the whole thing. So. I saw Mr. Stevens on Zoom, and I didn't think he looked like Mr. Stevens. Well, I'm sorry, I got it wrong because I, I he was, thought he was Stevens. trying to get on Zoom. No, He's out of town. It's not a problem at all. Any other things? I mean, that's just as where we are. We're excited. Uh, the airport, you have to have your airplanes out by July 1st. So if we get this approved, I spoke with Clay, we'll break ground on the cement here, disassemble that there, and bring it straight here. Good deal. This is and then finish. Thank you. Finish. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, folks. Okay, now, uh, with that presentation, uh, I would like to make a motion that we go ahead and approve the agreement between Mr. Stevens and the city of Cleveland on the location of the Hamlets. Okay. Marilyn made the motion, and the board seconded. Any other discussion? All those in favor, right hand. Against, same sign. Item 10, is consideration of policy number 1234. Action on awarding the bid from the electrical request for bids for the Cleveland Industrial Sports Park for Harvey damage. Mr. City Mayor. Mayor, Council. Council approved an HR Green's contract that was back in January of 2021 to do this project. I also included an approved contract for engineering services at 88000 The improvements will include electrical and platform improvements near field four and service drive, uh, also behind the existing concession stand. Uh, this, this is to get the electric um, utilities above, above the flood prone area. Right. Um, the city received bids for construction of the uh, reference project on May 25th. And Willow Creek Electric submitted the lowest proposed amount at 413, but they failed to submit the three required forms. We looked into this and they're disqualified, unfortunately. Uh, but McDonald Municipal and Industrial is the uh, complete and lowest bidder at 492 469. They're familiar with the project area and express no concern with the project schedule. They understand the detailed forecasts on pay schedules um, <clears throat> as the city did apply for a hardship on, on the Harvey uh, project and payments. Uh, they have uh, McDonald Municipal Industrial has completed similar lighting project to this one. And they plan to use three subcontractors, the JQC Construction, Spring Climb Fence, and Structural Steel Platform. FEMA has granted uh, us a timeline extension to January 2022. So uh, we want to get this project moving as quickly as possible. So we, we meet FEMA's obligation. Council, uh, Staff recommends approval as submitted um, and recommend McDonald Municipal Industrial. I make a motion that we approve uh, item number 10. Second. Okay. Uh, okay. Maybe you make the motion. Do you second it? Yes. Okay. Any other discussion? Um, I just want, I heard you say something about three subtractors. They, subcontractors? Correct. So they have three subcontractors that are going to help them on that project. And it's for masonry that uh, JQC will do the masonry and excavation work. That's their specialty. And then spring climb fence, obviously, for the fencing. And then there's a structural steel platform that will be at uh, behind field three, four, the service drive that will have the electrical <coughs> on it. And that'll be done by a structural steel platform, and there'll be an additional platform behind the concession stand. So those are the three main components of these subcontracted out by McDonald Municipal Industrial. So when this is complete, we should be I mean, at least safer. Yes, yeah. we'll have our electrical out of the uh, out of the flood flood prone area. We're actually surprised that 
the lights have worked. We've been told that they will go to continue. So we went out with this funding. And I got to tell you, I, I didn't think that we would do this project because I didn't think that we could get a containment plan and, and, and work out the deals with FEMA. Uh, there was a, a lot of paperwork that had to be done to do this project. This will this will cover us. This will get it out, get the electrical out of the flow from from an area. It'll be probably six <coughs> to seven feet of above the uh, of the ground. But Lord, it's still if we have a big flood and they have fences and stuff, that would have been but I got electrical at least I got. <laughs> it is a lot of money that's out of that sports car park. You you are correct. Any other discussion? All those in favor, right hand against the same sign. Okay. Item eleven is consideration of possible action on approval of ordinance amending the adopted budget for the year of twenty twenty one for amendments and one carryover from prior fiscal year. Mayor and Council, this is really a high housekeeping item. The city was inundated with uh, inundated, or inundated with floodwaters from uh, Harvey in 2017, and is related to the project that we just discussed. Uh, the sports park received several inches of water during the flood, and staff was not aware at budget time that we would pursue this FEMA project. The staff. Uh, Council approved the engineering to do this project, and the engineering is not covered as part of the FEMA project. That's 88,000. We do have the funding, and the funding was set aside in community and uh, uh, community division of the uh, Fund 100, which is a general uh, fund. And there's $110,000, and the plan was to either use it for this project if it came up or use that towards the the, uh, the pavilion, uh, additional supplemental money to do the pavilion in Stanton Park. There's general fund cash, it's not coming from 600. We're asking to move this 88,000 of the 110, move that to Sports Park, is, is that's the actual, we want the allocation to be correct uh, in, in the correct division. The, uh, the other amendments have to do with the freeze, and uh, that includes the Civic Center and the East and West Water Treatment Plant and the Sports Park, where there's flooding damage that was done there. Uh, and these amendments cover the insurance proceeds, so you have revenue coming in and uh, expenditures going out for the same amount. So there's no change to fund balance. Amendment number eight is related to the East West Wastewater Treatment Plant. Amendment nine is related to the Civic Center. And Amendment 10 is uh, insurance proceeds related to the sports park plumbing from the freeze. Again, no changes to, to fund balance. The last item is library renovations. This is a, a carryover. This is funds that we had set aside in last fiscal year to carry over. We did a majority of that project uh, uh, rehabbing the library. I believe that project was a total of $217,000. And we had $20,237 that overlapped in this fiscal year. So we're accounting for, for the cost of that project. Staff recommends the amendments and the carryover as presented to reflect unforeseen needs and programs approved by council. Mr. Barnett, that, that 88,000, um, and I know you said because of the flood, so is that specifically for the electrical or would it be used for any other damages that were done? It is, it is specifically the 88,000 this amendment will only be used for the engineering on this project and it's, it's set aside as capital as a capital expenditure in community we're asking to move that to professional services under the sports park to account for the 88,000. 
there's no change in fund balance on that. Watch Council's wish. Anybody else have any discussion? Make a motion that we approve all of these items. Okay. No second. Charlie made the motion. Marilyn seconded. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Yes. Same sign. Item 11 is consideration of possible action on approval of ordinance amending the, ooh, no, we just did that. 12, consider possible action on approval to go out for request for bids on the street paving project financed from the bond proceeds. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'd just like to make a comment before we move on to the uh, I would just like to thank you for this right here. Later on, you know, we made a point that we were going to do something for the historic streets around yeah. here, and this is my sixth year, and uh, I thought I wouldn't see it, but I think a lot of people are going to be happy around town when they see yeah. you know, the streets being improved. So I just want to personally thank you because I told you that's the way. <laughs> yeah, you, did, you said that. Okay. Hopefully, it. this, this sure. does good, really good. Okay. I think people are going to really be proud of what we do. I do have a comment on this one. There's a question on if we needed to do engineering on this project or not because it's a million dollar project, but it's also a maintenance project. And they would be saying that it would not. As long as it's just an overlay project and there's no engineering, we don't need to go out for qualifications. We can simply go out for And of course, with the, the section uh, chapter 2269, if we're going to do the bid for, we can go out for either lowest price or best value. I assume we'll go out for. Best price because it is an overlay. It's allocated uh, at least a million. It would be uh, funded through the, the bond program, Series 2021, which we received today. Uh, and it's uh, staff and council, we have brought uh, that list to you uh, with the prioritized streets and the proposed streets that are listed under Exhibit A. Uh, and the listing accounts for three variables. That's traffic, the condition of the street, and citywide inclusion. We wanted to make sure that we did all the neighborhoods that we kind of spread spread the love, I guess you could say, to make sure that since this is supported by tax dollars, I want to make sure that it goes to all four corners, I guess you could say. And um, and not just in one area. And we went out and looked at all these streets. I mean, there we and and there may be some drainage things we need to do before we do the streets. And we're looking at what uh, if we need to do any repairs to the plumbing or the sewer or water lines that that's done before we pave the street. And we may need to go about the qualifications on those limited items that have the water and sewer uh, listed. And there are roughly, uh, I believe, three or four streets that we need to redo the, the utilities on. Yeah. We need to do that. So we may come back uh, on those. We'll get started on these, the streets that are listed, but the ones that have the utilities, we'll need to come back and uh, have that as a separate RT. I'll make this uh, motion to approve the request for the bids on the street paving project. Okay. Have a motion to make final and second for Mary. Okay. Any other discussion? All those in favor? I'm in. Same side if they're against. Item 13 consideration and possible action on awarding bid. For engineering services for the police evidence facility project. Mayor Council, uh, you recently approved the RFQ process to obtain engineering permits for the planned police evidence facility. The RFQs will open on May 13th. 
and we received six responses. The scoring committee met and reviewed all of the submissions. And the top score, that company is Randall Scott Architects. Their submissions shows high familiarity with police evidence building. It was noted that they provided uh, services for the city of Willis and the city of Tomball on their police evidence facility. After, after awarded, the bid will be contacted uh, so is that we can uh, create a contract and bring that back to council approval. Uh, this is a budgeted project for the fiscal year. However, I would like to stress that additional funding is, is going to be needed to make this project uh, um, enhanced. Uh, I believe that we have enough funding to, to do a basic, to do the basic concepts of this building. But since this is going to straddle two fiscal years, we may be able to put some additional funding towards that project. But, uh, staff recommends awarding uh, the bid for Randall Scott Architects. And they will bring us back the blueprint, the blueprint of our what it's going to look like, all that. Yes. Okay. We'll yes. Bring the I know we've done a lot of it. We'll bring the contract back. Okay. Uh, with this being an item that we desperately need, uh, police departments, I just make a motion that uh, we approve. Okay. We have a motion from Mr. Lee and a second from Ms. Coy. No. Dolores. Dolores. I'm sorry. Any other discussion? All those in favor, right hand. Against, the same. Uh, 14 is consideration of possible action on awarding the bid for the engineering services for the Stansel Expo Pavilion project. Mayor Council, you recently approved the RFP process uh, to obtain an engineering firm to plan for the proposed Stansel Expo Pavilion. The RFQs were also open on May 13th. The score committee <coughs> met and reviewed all submissions, and the top score is that company is BRW Architects. And they're also doing our fire station. Uh, and after awarded, uh, we'll, we'll ask that the uh, bidder can uh, submit a contract and it will be brought back to the council after it's been reviewed and uh, we'll bring that contract for your approval. Uh, this is a budgeted project for fiscal year. will come out of our fund 600 uh, hotel occupancy tax uh, and we have $300,000 plus. Uh, that's uh, earmarked for this project. Staff recommends awarding the bid to be our I make a motion that we accept funding our bid from BRW. This is something that uh, we've been planning now for a while. And, uh, I just think it's time that we make a move on this one. Yeah, I'll second that. And this is a this is a we, will we tear the whole thing out or will they do it? I mean, not we are, but I mean, for this people, this substantial part. That's part of the project, yes, sir. Okay. Have a motion from Mr. Lee and a second from Ms. Coy. Motion carries. Thank you. 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 Resolution authorizing professional services provider selection for coronavirus local physical recovery fund program through the American Rescue Plan Act of 2021 for administration and planning services and approval of contract between the awarded bidder and the city of Cleveland. Mayor Council, kind of confirm a branch here in this project, and this is the this is the funding that we were going to use for the water tower over at uh, Northside Elementary and Tanglewood area. We, we still plan to do that project. 
but as of 3.30 p.m., we received an email from our grant administrator that uh, there's some growing concern with the lack of information from the state of Texas. Uh, the, uh, our administrator is going to continue to to monitor the American Rescue Plan developments, but the status on this project, uh, we should have already, we were guaranteed a payment, and we have not received a payment. Uh, we, were, we were slated to receive, I believe it was uh, $800,000, uh, $800,000, $900,000, and at, on the 10th in that income. And we understand that uh, Texas is one of the many states that has not requested these funds. So this project may be a political football. Fortunately, we, we, we got, uh, we, we have some funds available for the water tower. If you remember, we had earmarked a million dollars towards that water tower project. So we could go ahead and move forward with the engineering on this project. We could approve this based on if we ever receive the award, correct? So uh, there are views on this uh, where uh, we're awarded on May 13th, and we had two responses. Two responses. The top score the company was public management. Uh, in their submission, they, they included their contract, which approved with a resolution awarding the bid. And the contract is uh, currently under review by the city attorney. And the city attorney is the sponsor. The fee for the services is not to exceed $70,000. However, the consultant reserves the right to renegotiate the fee based on additional guidance from the U.S. Treasury. And that's unknown at this point. Uh, a lot of unknowns on this project. And the reason why it's kind of come to you this way is we want to stay ahead of this, this program and make sure that we were ahead of the game. So uh, we're still trying to find our way on this. So at least it's stay here. Um, the timing is critical. As you know, the, the uh, independent school district is ready to go. And build uh, new elementary and, and the middle school will soon follow. So staff recommends the award of the bid to public management and approve the contract as submitted and only to be paid if the funds are awarded. So if they're not awarded, then, then what's the plan? Well, they won't get paid for their administrative services on this project. Because it's a, it would be grant. So we do have a million dollars that's set aside in the bond. We can go ahead and move forward on the engineering. Because originally we set aside a million dollars on the bond to do the new tower. And you have to change the wording to. Yeah, hopefully we'll receive this and that will give us the additional funds to, to do this project. If, if, if not, we can use the funds that were already provided to us towards that project. So you're my, saying my hope was to use those bond funds for other water sewer improvements. If we don't receive this grant, then we'll have to use it, have to use it for the water tower. And this is the state of Texas? Yes. I did review the list and honestly it didn't fall down party lines, so I don't know what the issue is. Uh, the state of California has <coughs> not received their funding well as the state of Texas. So there wasn't there wasn't any kind of uh, I guess you could say there were no markers that would that would suggest that it was party politics. Um, I don't know I'm 16 so do we need to change that or is still going to we still need to do that if, if funds are awarded and also I'd like for uh, we still do need to do the uh, Engineering for the project will come from the bond, the bond fund. Have you talked to any of the state representatives or any, anybody no, yet? I actually heard about this at 3 30 today. So it could be that we receive the funds, so I'd go ahead and, and approve this, but it's, it's 
we're getting a little nervous uh, from from our viewpoint. I just wanted to let you know that's that's the latest and greatest information that I have available. Any questions? Yes, sir. I'd rather not wait. I'd rather move forward uh, because we can't delay the project. We don't get a, we don't get a work of funds. It's, uh, it's granted. Our management, they derive the fees as a percentage of the grant. No. So, no. We're not going to be no. out for any funds, but if we don't move forward, we surely don't get the fees. Hopefully, we'll get it. Hopefully. Yeah. Okay, with that said, then. Um, I would like to go ahead and move forward to make the motion to uh, authorize the um, special concern to the program. Um, second. Second. Carolyn, did you second? I did. Okay. Marilyn made the motion. Carolyn seconded. Any other discussion? <laughs> All those in favor, right hand, again, same. Item 16 is considered a possible action on resolution authorizing special services provider selection of Contraviar's local physical recovery fund program through the American Rescue Plan of 2021 for engineering and design and services. Okay. Mayor Council, this is similar to item 15, but instead of uh, the uh, grant uh, services, we're looking at the engineering on this project. So the RQs were open at the same time, May 13th. We had 11 responses. We had really good responses. The scoring committee met and reviewed all the submissions and the top score is, uh, is strength engineering, which uh, they've done the, uh, they've done a GLO project with us here recently. Uh, the city, if, if awarded, uh, the city staff will meet with the, Winning bidder to develop the contract for city council's approval. Timing again is very critical in this project. And uh, due to the water capacity needs at the CIB North Side uh, campus, uh, staff recommends a water bid to Strand Engineering using the Corona Relief Funds or the bond proceeds. Um, if Funding is deferred or uncollected by the city. Mayor, I make a motion that we award the bid to Strand Engineering. Okay. James. Carolyn made the motion. James seconded. Any other discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Those against. Item 7, 17, consideration of possible action on approval to go out for request for qualifications for engineering and design and services on the training depot rehab location project. Mayor of Council, City purchased the old Santa Fe train depot from Bobby Powell. It is advised that the train depot uh, should be moved to land uh, across from Stansel Park. City currently owns uh, for optimal use. The request for qualifications will be for engineering and design. Uh, the firm is to design and engineer the layout of the lot and rehabilitation plan for the train depot prior to being moved from its current location. Staff recommends an RFQ process before commencing on this project. <coughs> Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that we move forward with the request for qualifications for this project from the train depot. Second. Marilyn made the motion. Doors, you second it? Yes. Okay. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Or anybody have a discussion on it? All those in favor, raise your right hand against. Item 18, consideration and possible action on approval of the Texas General Land Office GLO Fund. Reallocation request for the Community Development Block Grant Disaster Recovery CDBG DR contract number 20 065 009 022. 
Mayor Council, this was a, a strand engineering project. The city was awarded this project and had two components. We had a, a drainage portion and a generator at uh, one of our sewer plants. Um, they did the uh, drainage just out here outside of City Hall, just as a reference. Uh, the attached letter from the GRO is the refund reallocation amendment request to transfer funds from one of the projects to the other project to, to utilize paying the most, most of the remaining balance for the sewer project. So basically moving money from one project. They're all within the GRO project, these two projects. It's, it's moving. Uh, the uh, balance to the project that needs it the most, and the remain there is a remaining balance. There is a portion that the city will need to pay. Uh, it's five hundred sixty-nine dollars. Uh, five hundred sixty-nine dollars is requested uh, from the city the resources. There's a balance. The staff recommends approval of fund reallocation request, noting limited obligations from city resources. This is really kind of a housekeeping item as we close this project out. I make a motion to go ahead and Second. Danny made the motion and go over she second. We have a discussion. All those in favor of that. I heard you say something about moving, moving funds to <coughs> another project or one that was needed the most. So is there projects that are already intact to this? Yes, there's two projects. One's a the generator project and one's a drainage project. They, they actually share the same bank account. So it's just a matter on paper showing that funds were used towards the uh, the drainage project versus the generator project. It's a it's a true up between those two projects. They were all administered under the GLO umbrella. It's basically two sub projects within one. So it's a matter of closing out that GLO project. Any other, any other discussion, Council? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Again, same thing. 19 uh, consideration of possible action on approval of minutes from the city council meeting held on May 18, 2021. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I yes. don't know if I can do this, but I'd like to make a motion that we go ahead and approve item number 19. Uh, that's the minutes from the last minute uh, meeting and also the financial report. You know, we've had these, these packets since Friday, and uh, we should already be able to study this. And if it's something that we don't agree with on the financial report, we should already know about it. I think it's just a waste of time. I mean, you know, we got so much other stuff going on that's important. You know, as we see, we need to be more focused on that. That's just my skill. I mean, that this should be put on the consent agenda as any other board or council usually does. I don't like this. It should be on the consent agenda. Right. I agree. So you're asking to pass on 19 and 20? Yes. I'll second that. Council, any discussion? Danny made the motion to, to, to uh, approve of 19 and 20. Marilyn seconded. Any other discussion? All those in favor? I am. Item 21 is consideration of possible action on approval of reappointment of positions one through nine for the Board of Reinvestment Zone one. Uh, one, three, five, seven, and nine are two year terms, two, four, six, and eight are one year terms. Uh, Mayor Council, this year we all members need to be reappointed. Uh, there are no recommended chain, changes to the names of the positions at this time. So in position one, you have David Nimmuth, you have Jeff Zhu, and in position two, position three is Jack Gaughan, position four is Tiffany 
Timothy Lee. Position five is Levi Blum. Position six is Jonathan White. And uh, position seven is James Lonnie Ganner. And that's appointed by the Liberty County Commissioner's Court. And then position Position eight is Senator Robert Nichols, and position nine would be Representative Ernest Bell. These are all members that have, that have served in the past. Yeah. I make a motion that we go ahead and approve item number 21. I think that's enough. Second. You second, Mayor? Yes, sir. Uh, we have a motion from Danny and a second from Marilyn. Any other discussion? All those in favor, right hand. 22 is consideration of the possible action of approval on application of payment number 4R for Leland and Bradley construction for final payment, including retainage for project Houston Street drainage covered for CDBG DR contract number 20065009 CO22. This is the disaster recovery project. This is a final pay application number two. It's specifically for the Houston Street drainage culvert project, which includes the retainage. Staff recommends approval of the application for payment and submitted under the review of strand engineering. That is 35,000, number 62, RPC Correct. I'll make a motion that we approve the resolution of the city council of Cleveland, Texas, declare a certain personal property of the city to be surplus and to give the city manager the authority to dispose of it. Marilyn made the motion, Danny seconded. Any other discussion on this? Oh, okay. Thank you. So we didn't get 22. Marilyn, you made a motion on 22. I was jumping. Okay. And Danny seconded. Okay. Yes. Okay. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Right hand. Yes. Consideration of possible action on approval of resolution city council of Cleveland, Texas, declaring certain personal property of the city of Cleveland to be surplus and delegating authority to the city manager to dispose of this surplus property, a great Ford car and two office desks for water billing office. Probably not a second you got that. Yes. Yeah. 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 a motion that we approve. Dan made the motion. Yeah. James, you second it. All those in favor. Consideration and possible action calling for a joint public hearing with the City Council and the Zoning Commission for July the 20th, 2021, on a proposal to amend the city's contraprincy contra contra uh, zoning ordinance and map for a proposed zone change request. Mayor, yes. Cal okay, go ahead. Mayor Council, in the course of reviewing this, the citizens' request to build a home, it was discovered that the area of the bill was zoned public, which prohibits the city from allowing new homes in that area. And obviously this was never the intent of the zoning map and did not account for the residential structures. This is an area north near Douglas School. Um, uh, this joint public hearing uh, will be to amend the zone from public to a zone that is more appropriate for the area. The majority of the surrounding area is mixed use. I make a motion that we approve item number 22. Second. Danny made the motion. James, you second? Yes. Okay. Any other discussion? All those in favor, right hand. Against, same thing. 25. Considering consideration of possible action on approval of contract with Porter Drug and Alcohol as an alcohol and drug testing vendor. Who can we do that? We have used absolute drug testing in the past, but they've gone out of business. Mm -hmm. Staff recently met with 
burden with the Board of Drugs and Alcohol, and this is they've opened their office in Cleveland. Uh, we would like to with them. Uh, this would save us uh, a lot of money and, and time as far as uh, doing the testing. Do they have an office here? They do. Yeah. They have an office in town. Make a motion that we approve this contract with the Board of Drugs. Second. Marilyn, you made the motion. Yes, sir. Bill Morrissey seconded. All those in, any other discussion? All those in favor, right hand. Same for against. 26 consideration of possible action on approval of contract with Gisner Engineering for construction materials testing for the new fire station project in the amount of $1,221. This is Corey. That's that's correct, Mayor. Uh, this is to provide testing on a concrete drive at Marion on Grand Oaks. Uh, we want to take a core sample of that uh, of the road there uh, on Marion. Uh, this is in reference to the construction location of Fire Station Two to ensure the road is suitable for fire department use. We just want to know if we can handle handle that road, and then we'll make a decision on what we need to do. Make a motion we approve this contract with Gasman and Gasman. Second. Marilyn, you made the motion. Carolyn, did you second it? Yeah. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Right hand. Again, same side. Uh, item 27 consideration and possible action on approval of amendment number two with Texas Select Long Care due to change in ownership. Mayor of Council, uh, we just recently approved Amendment 1 to this contract, is extending it for another term. Pretty happy with their services. Uh, but Amendment 2 changes is uh, related to uh, contracting with the parties, uh, changing it from uh, Chad Truesdell to James and Jenna Chamberlain. So they are now the new owners of Texas Select. Uh, there are no other changes in a, a rate or the terms that recommended. Same contract, everything just new owners. Correct. Second. John, you made a motion. Aaron, second. Any other discussion? All those in favor, right hand. Against the same sign. 28. Consideration of possible action on approval of master services agreement for investor services on the award bid for janitorial services for city facilities. Pleasure on this action. We did have the uh, master services, was here at the last, uh, last month. The bid amount was $42,150. Uh, there was a agenda item to approve the master service agreement uh, between Vaster Services and the City of Cleveland. Uh, we've, uh, City Attorney has reviewed the agreement, asked for a few changes, and which Vaster agreed to. Uh, but uh, this is Council's pleasure on, on this action. Go ahead. Go ahead. Let's go back and look at this because last month the business said we would come back this month and go to have it here. So I think we found out that we had somebody already doing this work and I didn't even know we had someone doing it. I think we need to go back and look at this and see that first that we already had the opportunity. Anybody else have anything? I agree with the Lord. Mayor, if there, Go ahead. If there is not affirmative action to approve the agreement, we'll put staff in a position to have to go back out for the rest of We'll have to go back out for the Correct. Be a, it's our unless there's an affirmative vote to approve the agreement. Second, going back out for a minute. You're making 
a motion for yes. okay. There, there's no need to go back out. I think the only motion, the appropriate motion, would be to consider the action of bringing it forward. Okay. And if there is no motion to approve that, I'm not good. Okay, just add a failure of the motion. Okay. Anyone else? Okay, we just that, that's done. Okay, fine. Okay. Yeah, we'll have a motion to approve the agreement. Okay. It's okay. essentially not approved. Okay. So we'll go back out for proposal with this. Okay. 29. Consideration of possible action to approve the contract with celestial displays for annual fireworks show and authorized C manager signed contract. Mayor and Council, uh, the City and Community Committee is engaged in promoting the City of Cleveland's 4th of July celebration as they have done uh, for many years. Uh, last year with Corona being the only exception. Celestial displays has the personnel qualifications training in it uh, to discharge firework displays. And the total payment to Celestial Display is 15000 Staff recommends an agreement with Celestial Display that's uh, it's in your packet and authorize the city manager to sign that agreement. I'll make a motion that we approve this contract given the city manager the authorization to sign the contract. Second. Marilyn made the motion, James made the second. Any other discussion? All those in favor, right in. Same again. Item 30, consideration of possible action to approve the following documents for the Texas CDBG contract number 7222142. This is on the downtown revitalization project phase number two. Can you read that the rest of that? need to unless you have a question regarding this this is on the phase two uh downtown revitalization project and that'll kick off just south of houston on south travis and uh and it'll actually be the complete some work on loop as well as hampton street bottom i asked this before it says appointment of a labor labor standards officer and delegation of a civil rights officer. At the Melinda Smith, who is the grant administrator, will be the labor standards officer. And as drafted, the mayor appoints, and uh, it's uh, stated in there that the mayor appoints a city manager as the civil rights officer for the city of Cleveland. The civil rights officer shall be responsible for the oversight and compliance of fair housing equal opportunity activities be performed by the city of Cleveland as required by the Texas Community Development Block Grant. So these requirements are uh, this federal funding and, and it comes from CDPG Community Block Grant. And so uh, fair housing is, is exactly what it's about. Right. I'll make a motion that we approve this. Sorry, no. um, when can we get started on this, Bobby, or when do they plan to start? I uh, will we'll ask Melinda uh, Smith, who is now the grant administrator with Trailer, uh, when we can have a kickoff on that project. I'm ready to move on it as well. Okay. Thank yeah, you. We'd like to see it. Carrie, you made the motion. Mm -hmm. Marilyn seconded. Yeah. Right. Any other discussion? All those in favor is right hand against same side. Okay, item 31 is a closed executive session for code 551 071. Executive session for code 551 072.
I'm Okay, we're back at open session. No, no action taken in the executive session. I'd make the, uh, get a motion to adjourn. Second. Marilyn and Danny second. All those in favor? Aye. Let's go. All right. Still down.